Hi, welcome to another one of my videos. If this is your first time here, I'm Adrian, your host and your guide through this video. So grab your sketchbook and let's get started. On the screen is a list of all the materials you will need. For the paints, I use a brand called Folk Art and those are the names of the paints, but any paints that are close in color work. If you don't have an all media sketchbook, some cold pressed board works too. Acrylic is heavy and has a lot of moisture, so a standard letter print paper might be too thin. But if that is all you can get your hands on, that's fine too. A white gel marker, if you can find one otherwise, you can use a very thin detailed brush. Art is my therapy, and when I set out to relaunch this channel, I decided that part of my goal with each video was for you to relax and unwind because I would want you to experience the therapeutic benefits of art like I do. Now, I have to tell you I'm not a therapist. I'm just trying to share some simple art techniques with you and hope that it helps you like it has helped me. To do this, um, we need to set the right tone and set up our space and our surroundings. Go ahead and choose some nice relaxing music to listen to in the background. Grab a cup of tea, light a candle, and do whatever you need to do to create an environment that is conducive to relaxing. Once you have all of that set up, the next step is to become mindful. And that means to be more present so you can focus on the here and now. So start off by taking a deep breath. Now exhale and feel your body release any tension. You can do this a few more times if you need to and now we are going to begin. Pour some of the forest green paint along the edge of the old gift card or putty knife and then press the card down from the center of the page and glide it towards the outside at about a 30 degree angle. Put enough pressure on the card so that the paint spreads evenly across the page. Do this until the entire page is covered in forest green. You can cover the ent entire page pretty quickly and with not much paint. Use the craft dryer to dry the page. If you have watched some of my other videos, you will notice that I repeat some of the simple techniques and explain them in each video. And that is because many viewers may not have watched any of my other videos and need the explanation or also because having things repeated a few times also helps with retention and mastering of a skill. Pour some of the forest green on the paper plate and dab the large square brush in paint. Now glide the brush to make a gentle curve to continue the green on the other side of the page. The idea is to create an interesting composition by breaking up the white rectangle and making the seam of the sketchbook disappear. It's always a good idea to dry everything in between steps, so use the craft dryer here to make sure everything is dry. You can also come back with the brush and touch up some of the areas of the green that are a little too translucent, but you don't need to worry about making everything completely solid. You can start by making an outline and then filling everything in, or you can try and make one stroke leaves, and you do that by applying a little bit of pressure with the tip of the brush and as you glide it, place all the bristles completely on the paper, applying pressure and then lift slowly. You can use the tip of the brush to touch up the leaf. You're going to follow the edge of the semicircle and you're going to place each leaf at almost the same distance apart. Rotate them slightly so that they have an organic feel but they should still look like they're following the semicircle. If you feel that making a leaf with one stroke is complicated, simply let go of your fears and trust your ability and your steady hand. Don't worry if you mess up. It doesn't matter. You're practicing and you're trying something new. Feel proud for trying and stepping out of your comfort zone. This reminds me a little bit of when I was learning how to make pancakes. I wanted to learn how to flip them, but I was very, very fearful of having the pancake end up on the stove or on the floor and it kept me from trying. I mean, everybody loved the pancakes, but I just felt like I wanted to try that flipping of the pancake and kind of seeing it in the air with the pan. 
but I was just too afraid to try. And then finally one day I just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna go for it because um, why not? What's the worst that can happen? It's gonna fall on the floor and so I clean up the mess, no big deal. And I was shocked to see that it was much easier than I thought. I had made it much worse in my head and you know, we do that sometimes. We get in our heads and let that fear creep in. Anyway, this is a probably a great time to take another deep breath and exhale to release all that fearful energy. Go ahead and complete making the leaves. And when you do that, um, dry everything, please. And we'll be ready for the next step. Now, grab a small to medium round brush and dab it in Cascade Blue and use a brush with a round end and not a pointy end because you're going to use that end to make the petals on the next set of flowers. Make a small U and then fill in the center with one stroke like this. We're making clusters of three on the forest side and then on the other side of the page where everything is white, we're also going to make a cluster of three. You don't need to put them in a specific place. Just know that you will have other elements added to the page. So spreading them out is best. I am using a limited palette of colors that go well together. A mixture of light, dark and midtones that allow me to create a design that is vibrant interesting and very illustrative. If you were decorating a room in your house, you would also use a limited palette so that everything is well designed and in balance and, and works well together. And if you had any of the colors you're using here, for example, you could make a throw pillow with this design as an, you know, that could, could work with what you're designing. And um, what I'm trying to say is that not all art is landscapes and portraits. A lot of art is surface design patterns, illustrations, and seen on everyday objects. And this video is part of the beginner series that focuses on this style of art. If you're enjoying this video so far and you find value on this content, you can support my efforts by liking this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can be alerted when new videos are available. I will be posting full tutorials at least twice a month. Did you know that when you like my video, you're telling YouTube that my content is worth showing to other YouTubers? Yeah. So when you like my video, you help me reach more people. And if I can help one person out of a bad day, if I can improve their mood, if I can just release, you know, help them release some of that tension and that stress, then that makes my day and makes the reason for this channel completely worth it. You should be about finished with the cluster of flowers and don't ask me what kind of flowers they are because I have no idea. They could exist in real life. They probably do, but I have no clue. If you think you know what they are though, feel free to leave a comment. Okay. So with the same paint and brush, you're going to make a slightly different large flower. Um, this one is going to have a total of six petals and still also does not have a name so you can tell me in the comments what you think it's called but from here on I'm just going to call it six petals. So paint one petal from the outside to the inside applying less pressure on the brush when you reach the center so the petals are slightly wider at the top. Do the same exact thing on the opposite side so it looks almost like a straight line. Now make two petals on one side and two more on the other side of the line. So it seems like two more lines intersecting the center. And if you do that, you can look at it and you can see that you have your flower. Ta-da! Anyway, now you can go ahead and make another seven or so on this white side of the paper. Spread them out because you will be adding more flowers and leaves very, very soon. You can also see that as I'm making these flowers, some end up with eight petals, uh, some end up with five, some are the six petals. I make some slightly in a different way than how I just described it. And that's really all fine. There's no rule really that says they all have to be six petals. You can just do whatever feels right for you and whatever works.
For now, we are moving back to the forest green side and if you need to touch up the cluster flowers because they're still a little see-through, go ahead and do that. The next thing what we're going to do is um, use the wasabi green to add stems to the cluster of flowers. You are going to add the sepals part of the flower. That is the green leafy part that is joined to the stem make each one and make some of the stems crossing over each other. This is where you get to be a little bit more creative and you get to have, you know, some, some fun with it basically. So you want to do the stems, but you want to treat them all a little bit different. You can make a cluster of stems that can end up behind one of the white roses. Maybe another set of stems can end up by a leaf and the other cluster maybe goes off the page. So they're all similar, but different, and therefore visually interesting. Next, uh, you're going to make three white roses. They're going to be large, not huge, just large. So envision where on the page they would be, because you're going to paint three leaves that come out from behind each rose. You will use the pointy round brush and the midnight blue, and you're going to make each side and then fill in the middle. You want the leaves to be slightly larger and more substantial than the leaves you made earlier. See what I'm doing so you can understand what I mean. Now it's time for the roses. So with the wedding cake white and the medium slanted square brush, make some really wobbly circles and cover a little of each midnight blue leaf so only a little bit shows. I don't know if you like roses, but I really like roses. And my favorite color is peach. And my second favorite color is white. And I really like how this white looks on this page, don't you? So anyway, go over them again a second and maybe even a third time so they are a solid tone because that really helps the white stand out off the page. Um, and once you're done with everything, go ahead and dry everything up. With the medium brush, we're going to make midnight blue roses on the white side of the page. These are going to be slightly bigger than a single cluster flower and smaller than the six petals flowers. All in all, the size difference among all these flowers is not monumental. They should be pretty uniform. So sprinkle them all throughout, but leave some space around them because we're going to add a few more things. After this, go back to the cascade blue and touch up all the flowers on the white side so that they're not so streaky and distracting to the eye. With the medium brush, go back now and add a dot in the center of all the six petal flowers. Now change brushes to the detail brush, but keep using the midnight blue. You're going to add the sepals and stems to the cluster flowers on this side, but they're gonna be midnight blue. They're not gonna be the wasabi green. And you're going to have each stem end on a blue rose. The next step is a bit of a mix and match approach. You are going to add two leaves to some of the six petal flowers. The leaves are only outlines because it's more of a graphical treatment and you're just gonna add the vein down the middle. Another flower may have a leaf and a stem joining it to a blue rose and maybe a bud coming out of it. It really depends on the placement of things on the page and what works. So pick and choose what works on your page and play with it. Remember, you're having fun, this is your time, and if you need to, Take a deep breath and exhale. You may need to rinse your detail brush really well because you're going to use it again, but with white paint this time, you are going to add some white details. This is my favorite part. Starting with the dot at the center of all the blue roses. And then after you're done with that part, you are going to add a tiny highlight on each of the petals of all the flowers. Doesn't that just make it pop? I just love this part. I think everything just kind of comes to life. Oh, and don't forget to add those same highlights on the right side of the page. Rinse the brush again and now dab it in wild wasabi. 
start at the center of the white rose and make an irregular circle. Then you're going to make irregular semicircles from the inside, moving your way out to mark the petals of the rose. Do this with all the roses. What do you think of this project so far? Are you feeling more relaxed yet? Is there something in particular that is making you come back to my channel or something that you have particularly enjoyed on this video so far? I would love to see it in the comments because I would love to better understand what it is that you like about my content so that I can continue to create similar content. Your feedback is super important to me. Please take another deep breath and exhale, releasing any remaining tensions as you check that everything is dry. Now, with the white gel pen, outline each blue leaf and draw the veins. If you do not have a white pen, you may use a really thin detail brush and make your outlines. I recommend thinning out the paint with a bit of water so it flows more smoothly, but not too much that it becomes transparent and really watery. When you finish the outlines, wait for the gel marker to dry completely or you might smudge it by putting your arm or hand directly on it. And yes, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> We're near the end now. So grab the Sharpie fine point marker and outline all the six petal flowers. If you're not completely on the edge with it, it's fine. Practice helps you improve over time, and by the last one, it should feel more fluid. I usually feel a bit rusty with the first one, with the first one of anything, really. But after my eyes get better at communicating with my hand, it gets easier. The next step is more of a doodle exercise, since you're adding leaves to the smaller roses, but only in outline form. I'm adding two to each rose, and some next to each other, and some on opposite sides. It all really depends on what other elements are on the page and how much space I have. You'll need to look at the elements on the page and decide for yourself what makes sense. You might see some gaps here and there. That's where you're going to add some randomly placed leaves. Once you're done, that side of the page should be evenly busy all throughout. All the elements should be evenly distributed and I mean to the naked eye, you don't need to bring out a ruler and measure things or anything like that. Well, here we are at the end of another guided creative and relaxing exercise with me, Adrian. And look at what you have in front of you and what you've created and give yourself a pat on the back. Great job. You tried something new, stepped out of your comfort zone and hopefully had fun in the process. If you enjoyed the video and you found it relaxing, please show your appreciation by sharing with friends and liking the video. If you want more of these, don't forget to subscribe and remember you find me by looking up Artsy Soul. Thank you so much for watching and for relaxing with art. See you next time.